Hello and welcome to another EventRight TV show. My name is Andrew Krause and I co-founded EventRight with Stephen Key 21 years ago. We've had students in over 65 countries. We have 12 coaches and one of our most amazing coaches is Les Williams. Les, welcome. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Thanks for coming on and talking to us about, uh, about some of your experiences with your students, things that our students struggle with which yeah. our whole YouTube audience, they're going to struggle with a lot of the same stuff, right? Yes, they are. They are going to do that. Uh, you know, this business, oh, and by the way, thank you, Andrew, for having me on. Um, but yes, uh, students are going to experience that. It's something that happens, but it's also something that refines us as people and business people. So I, I feel like it's necessary, but, uh, you know, we do a great job here at InventRight. So one of the things that you and I, we were brainstorming what we were going to talk about, and you came up with a good idea that um, sometimes people have a hard time with the bumps in the road. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I've found that the longer somebody thinks about an invention, the more it becomes fixed in their head exactly how it is. And right. you were telling me that you have experience with your students sometimes that they're just, they, they're a little resistive to adjusting to what the company is saying. Right. And well, so can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit, Andrew. Um, so just recently, about a week or so ago, I had a student that was kind of dealing with that. Um, and what I try to do is kind of get them to get their mindset wrapped around, OK, well, this is just more or less a refining process. It's kind of like going to the gym. OK, you go there for the first couple of weeks, you're going to get sore. You're going to feel a little achy, but over time, as you do it, you'll get used to it. Your body, you, you, you build endurance, you build strength, and then there's some know-how to that also, right? That ability to be able to understand how to properly lift that weight and carry on and move forward. So, but you don't want to be that person going to the gym or that inventor that as soon as they get a little sore and they haven't really figured out how the interaction works, whether it's exercising or interacting right. with a potential licensee, a company that's going to license your product, <laughs> you don't just give up and not come back, right? Which happens that's a lot right. at the gym. That's right. And, you know, you can take that analogy or that perspective, I guess, uh, into anything in life. You know, you don't just quit. You don't give up. You got to keep pushing, keep going, keep learning, keep getting beat up, get those scars. That's, how, that's what makes us better. And over time, you'll gain experience, strength, and a lot of know-how. So, I think that's the best way to do it. So let's give, let's give some examples of the things that people struggle with where they they don't – it's not that they don't want to accommodate the company or they don't want to have a discussion. But let's be honest. The inventor in their head, they have a direction they think it want, is, needs to go. The company right. might have other thoughts that aren't the same direction. That's right. And that's right. how do people struggle with going with the flow and maybe changing what the product is or changing the name or – changing your, or just having a conversation about accommodating some concerns the company has. I think it's important to understand, you know, the company that you're dealing with. I think that companies have their way of doing things. They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing materials, packaging, things like that, that fits what's good for them. And you, you have to be open. You have to be flexible to that process, you know, um, th they know what it takes to help their concepts get to market and give them the best chance to be competitive on shelves. So if they're going in a direction that is a direction that you may not think is a great direction, trust me, let them do that. That's what they do. Well, be okay with that. Be flexible. Right. And, and it's okay to uh, – sometimes inventors, they don't think that they can ask these companies questions and interact. Say, oh, right. okay, you want to go think that direction is good. Tell me why. And then, yeah. you know, the inventor, now they know, and maybe right. they can even help make it better and go, well, well, okay, if you want to go that direction, let me think on that, and I'll get back to you with a slightly different version maybe. That's right. And, Andrew, that's a part of the process of being a product developer. That's why you guys – that's why it's good for companies and product developers to work together so that you can potentially bring products or concepts together uh, uh, to, to market together. I think that that's very important. Um, you'll learn a lot in the process by doing that. And then there'll be some bumps and bruises along the way. But again, the ultimate goal is to get the product or the concept to market. And sometimes it's okay to be flexible. Let that company lead you sometimes. Be open to you know, allowing for you to learn more from a company that's been doing it for a long time. 
And I know a lot of our students, we get new students that come in. So if you're new to the game, trust me, you want the company to kind of help guide you a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, be okay being flexible. Learn this process, and it'll bode well for you in the future. Ask questions, right? Ask Ask, questions. Ask questions and and get clarity. Sometimes people, students will email and they'll show me something, and they're like, what do you think the company's thinking? I'm like, you know, I don't know. Why don't you ask them? Because I couldn't figure out from this little information because then you start making stuff up. And so I think having that engagement and that interaction, whether it's on the phone, maybe later via email and being really on the same plane with the company, not being resistive, thinking you don't want them to think like, well, if they want to make it purple and I want to make it pink, I'm going to start getting upset with them. You don't want them to have that vibe from you. Right. That's right. And, And don't be afraid to I mean, don't be afraid to ask. I mean, the reason they're talking to you in the first place is because they're interested. Yeah. So, I mean, they could have literally told you a long time ago, no, this is not a good fit for us. It's a pass. Right. But if they are there and they want to, you know, they're, they're wanting to work with you on your concept, be okay. Be okay asking the question. I think it's very important. I think a lot of vendors have anxiety and they just want to get the deal done. And so maybe I just won't talk and then they'll send me a contract. But that's not really the way it works, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. No, no. You, you got to go through the process. Yeah. Uh, you got to take your time. You got to learn. There is no shortcut to success. Mm-hmm. Uh, take the time to learn. Ask the right questions. Go through the process. Uh, be OK being refined. Be, be OK being coachable. That's very important. So what a lot of people, they'll free, their, their initial thought process, well, that's what I got my provisional patent on, or if they filed a patent on that. And their mm-hmm. mindset is it's on that. But they can easily file another provisional if they come up with an improvement, right? Yeah, they mean, could. Yes, they can. Yeah. Yes. Little minor tweaks here and there. I think that that's very important too. Um, but again, it's the whole process of you know coming in, not being fearful. You know, don't worry about too much. Let it fly. Have fun. This business is a fun business. Yes, you get beat up in here and there, but just be okay. You know, going out, having fun, learning as much as you can. Uh, be okay with the process and let it make you, not let you make it. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And and if, if you're asking good questions, they're never going to think you're a pest or asking too many. If you're asking good questions, especially when the questions are based on things they say. So they say something, I'm looking to get clarity on this. So you think this and this is a better direction to go. Oh, okay. Let me, let me think. And you don't have to have an answer right there either. Right? No, no, you don't take your time. There's, there's no rush. You don't have to hurry up and get back to the company really quick. Right. Right. You know, like what I tell a lot of my students, Hey, listen, guys, if you all have questions, run them by me. If a question, if a company asks you something and you, you know, feel a certain kind of way about it, Hey, run it by me. Let's talk through it together. Yeah. That's one of the benefits of our program and having coaching because, you know, we help those students so that they can feel comfortable and build confidence so that they can learn how to go out on their own and fish yeah. on. Well, and if you got a specific question for your specific scenario, you can't look at a YouTube video or a book and say, how do I answer this? You have a coach, you know, right. so it yeah, That's, definitely. Yeah. But I think regardless of whether or not people sign up for our coaching, I think this information is very helpful. So oh, yeah. To summarize, the, the mindset is to be willing to adjust to things the company says, get clarity, and mm-hmm. then you don't have to have an answer right there. Let me think on that and get back to you. Yeah. But you want an openness because yeah. once they, because they, they, there's a vibe. Have you seen there some of your students put out yeah. a vibe that's wrong, that's not open? Yeah, there is a vibe. It's like uh, sometimes they may say something to you. I've had multiple students do that for me. They'll, they'll say something to them or ask them something, and they're like, Let's, should I respond right now? I'm like, no, take some time to think about that. Let's process that for a couple of days. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay to do that. You know, that shows a certain level of professionalism. And furthermore, I don't think I've ever seen anything happen very well that was rushed. Mm-hmm. Uh Typically, I mean, even if it's just hurrying up, trying to get to work on time, I don't think I've ever seen anything bold well for anyone being rushed. So take your time. Have you ever had one of your students lose a deal because they didn't respond in a day or the same day or 24 hours or 48 I wouldn't hours? Say, I wouldn't say lose a deal because it's it's still kind of pending, but definitely pin themselves in a way 
because they were too hasteful. Oh, oh, okay. I was going the other way around. I was saying, yeah. I was trying to make the point that if you waited longer and took your time or let them know you'll get back uh, to them, that yeah. that never kills a deal. No, 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 no. It doesn't kill the deal. Yeah, because no. if they're really that, interested, they're not going to jump not, ship because you no. waited. Yeah, no, it doesn't kill the deal. They're, they're, the companies are interested. They want to talk to you. They want to be competitive in the market. Right. Look at Hasbro, for an example. I mean, I think a lot of their portfolio is outside product submissions. I mean, yeah, yeah they want to they want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But deals don't fall apart because you don't get back to them right away. And you, you, you're making the point more than likely you get back really quick with the wrong answer. That's what you should be more concerned about. Yeah, it, the wrong answer or the wrong energy sometimes. Wrong, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just not well, taking time to think about what you need to say. Be very professional because sometimes it, and it's happened to me before it, when I first was starting out, you know, I would respond quickly. And then later on that night, I say, ah, I should have said this, too. Mm -hmm. Although, yeah, the wrong the wrong when you start taking it the wrong direction too. one thing yeah. that a lot of people are shocked by is and we don't have time to go into this in detail. Maybe you come on back. But um, is it's more important for the inventor to take the negotiation in the right direction than the company. You can kind of guide them. You can say certain things to get them going over here, over there. They're, the company is not going to guide you. Right. And and, right. and I'll talk. I think I want to talk to Paul about that, our negotiation coach. I think that will be the main I was say, yeah, point Paul, I want to yeah, make Paul with Paul. A phenomenal job. What is, how, what is, how many contracts is he looking at a month, right? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And he knows like what to do. He knows what to say. Uh, no matter the size of the company, you know, invent right. We do a great job here, man. We're not intimidated. Like we know what yeah. to do. <laughs> well, you know, and, and, you know, Paul is the one helping our students close the deals, but all the coaches are getting people to that point, which I think is harder getting people yeah. to the point where they got a deal on the table yeah. than actually closing the deal. Yeah. Um, that's just the second half of it. You know, yeah. getting those marketing well, it's the last 20% oh. of it, not even right. half the coach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, getting the right mindset, getting the right marketing materials together, getting your research right, the proper research, not just right. some research that they've, yeah. It, you know, there's a difference between marketing to a company to get a product looked at versus uh, uh, marketing to a consumer to get a consumer to purchase your product. Right. Two totally little different things there, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I find myself oftentimes having to help fix uh, student sell sheets and help them with their marketing materials when they come They're in. They're not appealing to the right in the right way. Yeah. All right. Well, Les, thank you so much, man. You rock. I'll have you back. Um, I'm really excited about this series. Where we're interviewing all the coaches. People can get to know the coaches. But uh, most importantly, you know, you're going to share all the coaches are going to share helpful information like you did today. And it will give people some insight into what they should be doing and what they should not be doing and mindset stuff. And yeah. you're you're a very motivational coach. All our students are always saying that. Oh, thank, thank you, you for you. motivating your students. They they love I you, man. It. That's yeah. what I'm here for. Whatever I can give, whatever my gift is, I want to help, you know, give it and help students, you know, reach their goals so that they can feel comfortable moving forward in this process or Whatever process they decide they want to go on with in their life, hopefully they can take something from this this program. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for doing what you do. I um, want to remind everybody to take care, keep inventing, and we'll catch up with you next time. See you guys. Bye. See you. There's a great idea in each of us. But it's truly magical to see it come to life. Sharing your creativity with the world has never been easier. We can help.